Welcome to the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. This is a safe space where we invite healthcare providers to unapologetically be themselves after the working day. My name is Jennifer George, and each week I will connect you with guests and stories that will help transform your stress to success and fulfillment. Are you with me? Grab your drink of choice and let's chat. Hey everyone, welcome to the Healthcare Provider Happy Hour. I'm your host, Jennifer George, and I'm joining you today to chat with you a little bit about inspiration and motivation. Right now, with the pandemic, with a lot of uncertainty going on, with a lot of healthcare providers feeling exhausted, feeling overwhelmed, feeling drained, feeling burnt out, feeling depressed, experiencing their own sources of pain right now. I often think about motivation and inspiration and I kind of toggle between the two because I think while they both are kind of used interchangeably, they do have different meanings and I know for me personally they do. And when it comes to like conserving energy as a healthcare provider, I think it's really important right now to take a look at motivation and inspiration. And so motivation is typically uh, defined as the reasons or reason why um, you behave a particular way or pursue a particular goal, right? And we know that motivation can be both internal and external. So someone's internal motivation is usually their general desire to achieve something. So it comes from within. And that's the piece that's often interrelated with inspiration. Whereas external motivation is usually driven by outside factors. So um, an outside factor might be, for example, weight loss, or someone is motivating you to go to the gym with them, and you form this buddy system, and you go together and you commit to it and you're motivated. But when that person starts to drop off, you stop going that really means you were just purely externally motivated, right? It didn't really transfer into internal motivation, perhaps. When you think about our work, externally, we're motivated by tasks, deadlines, time, we're externally motivated by pay, by um, recognition, things like that. So it makes sense, right? But that transference to internal motivation is what sustains us. External motivation can only be sustained for so long. And that's why I would say people who, you know, you know, come into contact and receive very large sums of money, for example, realize that life isn't what they thought it would be because of the added money, right? There's so much more. And it all comes from within. Now, when I think of inspiration, inspiration is usually literally, scientifically, it's, it usually means to breathe life into someone, right? To breathe life into something, to take a breath in. And so when I think of inspiration, it's intangible, it's moving, it drives you, and you can seek inspiration from outside sources. You might be moved by someone's story, for example, or it might be more of a, an enlightenment of yourself. So I know when I wrote my book, when I wrote Communication is Care, that was pure inspiration. From the moment I wrote it to the moment I completed it, it was pure inspiration. And it trickled into internal motivation, right? It linked with that. But it, I was inspired. That's what sparked the book. And that's what sparked the clarity behind the book. I wasn't going looking for it. It just came to me. So that's where inspiration comes into play. And inspiration really is where I find myself right now when I talk about healthcare provider burnout. If you're looking at my Instagram lately and talking about decompression, it really comes from letting in rather than um, always trying to make things happen. So if you really think about it, if you think about all of those moments in your life where you've felt inspired, did they ever really come from your own physical pursuit of something, your own expenditure of energy? No, it actually comes from something coming to you, right? From something or someone breathing life into you, awakening you in your spirit, giving you more courage, having you connect more with who you are, and then driving the action from there, perhaps, when things become more clear from being inspired. 
So this is a time right now, I think, where healthcare providers were so externally motivated per our usual, but that's even more heightened because of this pandemic, right? So I think it's really important right now that we as providers need to let go a little more. We need to find ourselves in more of a state of appreciation so that we can be more inspired by what's going on around us in our lives and in our everyday lives, because we do have a lot to be appreciative for right now. And I think uh, you know, if, if you go on Twitter, like I do, don't do that. I don't recommend it. <laughs> it will kill your inspiration. Um, but I find myself right now in a position where I can't be around people who are right all the time, or people who are right wronging other people. Um, I just find the extremes are just too much for me. And I really am someone who can agree to disagree on things. And I, I'm finding that people's energy and sensitivity is super high right now that that's often taken personally, if disagreements do happen or feeling threatened by. And I think that um, that's what concerns me most right now in the healthcare field is that there are so many opinions going around. And there are so many emotions going around that it's just a very toxic place altogether when you think about it. So if I can create a little bit of inspiration in my own life, and I can only find that from within, then that's where I'm going to be. And that's where I'm going to be seeking. And I think that that is where my safe space is right now. And that's why I posted on Instagram about my post about getting lost in journaling. I was in such a state of appreciation during that journaling session that I almost was late for work. I literally lost track of time. My journaling is usually like five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, I think I've been journaling at that point for 20 minutes. So it was kind of crazy. But you know, you just literally are going with the flow. And that is kind of what inspiration is at the end of the day. So if you are feeling tired, if you are feeling drained, what I recommend you do right now is just start small and start within. Another thing that I find people do is they tend to look for inspiration outside of themselves. Yes, you can get inspiration from outside of yourself, like from other people's stories, like I said, for example. But also remember that inspiration can come from within, hence inspiration. Okay, so you too can be inspired and how you channel that and how you connect with that is by, by in my opinion, finding gratitude and appreciation for what is right now in your life so that you don't raise your level of resistance every day by trying to, to force yourself against what's going on out there, right? By trying to, to save the world, by trying to save every patient, by trying to be everyone's um, friend, right? By trying to be on everyone's side, you know, it's nearly impossible to please everybody. So start from within, find pleasure there, and then branch outward because what will happen is you will become more clear in your inspiration. You will start to actually find yourself connected more to your inner being, to, to what drives you on the inside. So then when situations and people are around you, you become highly sensitive to that and, and understand that, yeah, this is what this is good. This is a good energy for me to connect with, or this is not so good. And I need to distance myself from that. You become better able to discern situations that will come into your life at very quick paces um, every single day with a little more ease and flow. Okay, so I'm not saying not to be motivated, because I really do believe that inspiration and internal motivation are connected. But I really think it's a time to um, just look for inspiration and seek that. And that comes from just letting in, letting in, letting in, and also letting go of things that aren't serving you as well so that you can let in more. And from an energy conservation perspective, inspiration is more energy conserving, right? It's more energy building because you are just allowing rather than constantly um, making something happen, which is what we would normally do with motivation. Okay, so you can be in a state of inspiration and just be in pure appreciation and not have to physically do anything, but rather just feel. 
And it really, in my opinion, is also an emotion that way, right? It can lead to uh, joy, for example, it could lead to love, it could lead to compassion, it could lead to empowerment, it could lead to different emotions as well. So um, inspiration doesn't really take as much out of you. Um, I would so I would go so far as to say that it might even fuel you, because in a way you are decompressed and allowing things in. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you could put this all together, see how it fits in your life. If you have any questions about this podcast and you want to chat more about this topic specifically, just reach out to me on Instagram. My handle is at best obsessed with Jen. And if you like this podcast, please leave an honest review and subscribe and share. Um, your reviews mean everything to me. They really do help in me moving this podcast forward each and every week and chatting with you all. So until we chat next time, remember to stay well and to stay happy. So if you guys like this podcast, please subscribe and leave an honest review. Your feedback means everything to me. Your reviews are what moves this podcast forward. And I always appreciate receiving them. If you want to get a hold of me directly, reach out to me on social media. My handles are in the show notes. And you can always subscribe to my weekly newsletters at jennifergeorge.co so that we can stay connected. So until next time, thank you guys so much again for your ongoing support.